Hi everyone, in this video 11.4 we're going to look at factoring trinomials, um, the same type that we looked at in the last class, but we're going to look at a different method, um, which is called grouping. So we've kind of talked about grouping a little bit, and you can use that technique when you have a trinomial and you're trying to factor it. So in order to use this method, we're going to do what we did uh, in the last class when we used the, the Columbia method for factoring trinomials. Um, your first step is always to make sure there's a greatest common factor, and if there is, you're going to pull that out. Um, and we don't have any numbers that go into 2, 11, and 12, um, and not each term has an x, so there is no greatest common factor. So we're going to automatically um, factor using the grouping method. So I'm going to first take my a value and my c value, um, 2 and 12, and I'm going to multiply them. So 2 times 12 will give me 24. And I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 24, but add to give me the b term, which is 11. In order to figure out the signs, you can take the first sign you see, which is a positive, and multiply the two signs together. Positive times positive gives us a positive. So it's two positive numbers that multiply to give us 24, but when added, give us 11. So if I start with 1 times 24, that'll give me 24 if I multiply, but 1 plus, 1 plus 24 will not give me 11. Then you can try 2. 2 goes into 24 12 times. If I add 2 and 12, will I get 11? Okay, so that doesn't work. So then try 3. 3 goes into 24 8 times. And if I add 3 plus 8, I do get 11. So in order to factor this by grouping, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the first term, 2x squared. I'm going to take my 3 and my 8, and I'm going to add in the middle a 3x plus an, or actually I'm going to use an 8x and then a 3x. And then I'm going to put the plus 12 at the end. So the 2 comes from here. 8x and 3x are my two terms that I used here that add to 11 and multiply to give us 24. And then the 12 comes from here. The reason I just rearranged the 3 and the 8x is because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to factor by grouping. So if you'll remember, you're going to um, group the first two terms and the last two. And if I had put the 3 here, um, these wouldn't really have anything in common other than the x. So I would end up having to move them. But now by grouping them together, I can pull out a 2x from this pair because that's my greatest common factor. And 2x squared divided by 2x is x. And then I have 8x divided by 2x, which is 4. When I go to factor the 3 out of this pair, I get... 3x divided by 3, which is x, and 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So now, if you notice, you have the same quantity in each grouping. So we're going to pull the x plus 4 out, and you're left with 2x plus 3. And that's how you factor by grouping. Okay, let's try another one. So the first thing I'm going to do... I've got my a, b, and c values. I'm going to multiply my a times my c. So 8 times 5 gives me 40. And I'm going to find two numbers that multiply to give me 40, but add to give me a negative 14. My signs will be a negative, and then a negative times a positive gives me a negative. So I have two negative numbers that multiply to give me 40 and add to give me negative 14. And negative 10 times negative 4 works because negative 10 times negative 4 is positive 40. And negative 10 plus negative 4 is negative 14. So now to do the grouping method, I'm going to take my 8x squared and then I'm going to put the minus 4x minus 10x. Okay, that's taking the place of the negative 14x because those will combine to give you negative 14x. And then I'm going to take this 5 and put it here. Okay, so again, 
This 8x squared came from there. The negative 4x and the negative 10x add to this negative 14x, which I got from here. And then my plus 5 is at the end. So now I'm going to group them. And if the groups don't work, if you can't pull out something where you would get the same parentheses each time, um, just swap the terms. Move the 10 there and the 4 there. Um, so the greatest common factor of 8x squared and 4x would be 4x. And 8x squared divided by 4x is 2x. And negative 4x divided by 4x is negative 1. And here I have a minus, so I'm going to take the minus out. And 5 goes into 10 and itself, so I'm going to pull a 5 out. 10x divided by um, 5 gives me, or negative 10x divided by negative 5 is 2x. And 5 divided by negative 5 is negative 1. So again, you can see here that you get the same quantity. So we're going to factor that out. And then the leftovers would be 4x and negative 5. Remember, you can always check these by foiling. So you can multiply the first and the first terms. 2x times 4x gives you 8x squared. The outer terms, 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. And then this gives me negative 4x. Negative 10x plus negative 4x gives me my negative 14x. And negative 1 times negative 5, my last terms, would give me my plus 5. In letter C, um, if you look at each term, we actually have a greatest common factor that we can pull out first. Um, it, the greatest common factor of 18, 21, and 60 would be 3. That's the highest number that goes into all of them. And they all have a y, and the lowest one is y squared. So my greatest common factor is 3y squared. So to get my um, other factors, I'm going to Divide 18y to the 4th, divided by 3y squared, and 18 divided by 3 gives me 6. And y to the 4th, divided by y squared, is y squared. So remember, when you divide like bases, you subtract the exponents. Then I go to 21 divided by 3, which is 7. y cubed divided by y squared is y. Negative 60 divided by 3 is negative 20. And y squared divided by y squared is just 1. So that'll go away. And you can check this quickly by distributing. And when you do that, you should get that original statement back. Now I'm going to apply the factoring method. So to factor this, I am going to multiply my 6 and my negative 20 together. So 6 times negative 20 gives us negative 120. And you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you negative 120 that add up to um, 7. Okay, so negative 120 is a pretty big factor. Um, so, you know, always start with 1 and the number, but 1 times 120 is not going to work here. Um, and also, something else to recognize is our signs are going to be a positive and a negative. And I get that, again, because the first sign I see is a positive. And then multiply the two signs together. Positive times negative is negative. So you know you're looking for a positive ne and negative number. They have to multiply to give you negative 120 and add to give you 7. So if they're a positive and a negative, I know that I'm basically going to ha be subtracting. I'm going to have two numbers that are 7 units apart from each other. So they're not going to be too far away from each other. So we want to look for probably a bigger number that goes into 120. Um, and the other number is 7 units away from it. Okay, But typically you would start with 1 times 120, and then you would go to 2, and so on. Okay, But I'm going to kind of jump. Um, and let's see, 120 divided by 8 does give me 15. And I can get a 7 from an 8 and a 15, right? 15 minus 8 is 7. So my factors are 8 and 15. Okay, but where do I put which? So in order to get a positive 7, I would need a positive 15 and a negative 8. Okay, when I multiply them, they give me negative 120, and 15 plus negative 8 gives me my B term, or my negative 7, or positive 7. 
So now I'm going to um, group these. So I'm going to have 6y squared. And let's see, I probably want to put the... Um, let's try putting the negative 8... Uh, y here, and we can always move it if we have to. And then I've got the plus 15y minus 20. So again, remember, these two numbers came from here, the 6 came from here, and the negative 20 came from there. Okay, and um, out of here, I looks like I can factor a 2y out, and 6y squared divided by 2y is 3y, and negative 8y divided by 2y is negative 4. From the 15y, I can um, factor out a 5. And 15y divided by 5 gives me 3y. And negative 20 divided by um, 5 gives me negative 4. So we actually put them in the right spot. Um, and we were able to get the same quantity in each. So now I'm just going to factor that out of there and then write my leftovers. And that's pretty much it.